layering skincare products with the ordinary. It's a fantastic line, but it can be confusing. And today we're going to talk about layering your skincare. Before we dive into what you should put on first and what you should mix and not mix, we have to define layering. We know what it means to layer sweaters over t-shirts in the realm of clothing, but what does it mean in our skincare? When we're talking about layering, we're talking about what products you put on first, second, third, etc. And instead of just doing product types, such as your cleanser comes before your moisturizer, we're actually going to talk about these solutions, the texture and feel of these different products. We're going to play a little bit with cosmetic chemistry and talk about what's actually happening in these tubes that then translates to benefits for your face. And because even no Knowing the order of your skincare can be complex, I tried my best to create this handy little chart that explains how you should approach products in general. There's three phases. First you cleanse, then you do consistency, and third is complete. The consistency, the middle part, is the most difficult, and that's what we're going to be talking about when it comes to layering these products. But remember that the very first step is to cleanse. If you don't cleanse the slate first, meaning removing dirt, oil, makeup, or anything that was left on your skin throughout the day, none of the other products can really do their work. At the end, you have complete. For instance, you may want to use your sunscreen last, or you may want to use your makeup last. Your makeup is the completing step, and it should not happen somewhere in the middle. Now, the consistency part is the middle, and that's what we're talking about when we layer. The Ordinary has actually made it really easy, even though it's very complex, <laughs> and they've done this because on their website, they really nicely kind of lay out the pH, which stands for potential hydrogen, how basic or acidic products are. They also lay out if the product is formulated with water, with oil, with silicones, or something else. And depending on the texture and the feel, aka the consistency of these products, we can see how they're supposed to work on the skin and which ones we should apply first. Now, there are two main parts to every single beneficial skincare. You have a vehicle and an active. What does that mean? Think of you and I driving a car. The car is our vehicle. We can't get to the beach without it. But you and I are the active parts. The car isn't gonna do anything. It's not gonna go to the beach unless we're physically driving it there. We're pressing the levers, we're making it work. Same thing happens in your skincare bottles. The vehicle is what makes up the bulk of these products. Is it a cream? Is it a watery liquid? The active ingredient is the thing that's actually doing the work, such as the acid that's going to help exfoliate the skin, or the vitamin C, which is doing the active part of brightening the skin. And of course, different active ingredients like different habitats. There are some people that are picky and will not drive in a certain car if it's really beat up, or if it's too fancy. If it's a $5 million Ferrari, I don't want to be behind the wheel, because if I make one mistake, my financial future is ruined. <laughs> and sometimes the actives in your skincare behave the exact same way. Some of them like watery solutions, some of them like oily solutions, etc. When it comes to The Ordinary, there are five different types of solutions or vehicles that The Ordinary has. The first one is water, which is pretty self-explanatory. The second one is an anhydrous solution. That sounds kind of complex, but think about the word. An, like anti, means no or not. And hydrous, think of hydration. Anhydrous just means without water. So anhydrous solutions are normally very liquidy, like water, but they don't actually have water in them. This really comes into play with antioxidant formulas, such as the resveratrol and ferulic acid that The Ordinary has, because certain antioxidants are actually destroyed by water. Then we have suspensions. These are unique formulas that have one thing that is literally suspended in another. Think about a mechanical exfoliant that has little beads suspended throughout, or a sunscreen that, even though it looks like it's all one color, on a micro level, there's actually these little pieces of the active titanium dioxide suspended in the rest of the vehicle. These are heterogeneous solutions, hetero meaning different, and it's really just where one does not completely dissolve in another. You can kind of think of a suspension as monkeys being suspended in the Amazon rainforest. They're not completely combined, they are not the tree, but they are really suspended throughout, and they kind of swing and fly through on their way to go doing something important like eating bananas. Or making me smile. <laughs> 
The next type is oil, which is again pretty self-explanatory, and the last one is an emulsion. Emulsions are kind of special, they sound complicated, but really all that is is mixing two things that normally don't want anything to do with each other. Specifically, think of oil and water. If you ever tried to mix those, they're like, nuh uh, we're not dating, we want to get out of here. So if I have an oil and I want to put it into a product that also contains water, it's not going to work. They don't want to date each other, unless we get a mediator that helps them kind of work things out. That mediator is a surfactant, and its job is to say, hey sir, it is a fact that you two need to get together. And so the water and the oil can kind of come together in a way that blends completely. And this allows them to create the creams that we can then put on our face. In cosmetic chemistry, it's very common that you have an oil phase, then an aqueous phase, aka water phase, and then you have an emulsifier. And the emulsifier is doing the emulsification. Again, it's usually that surfactant that says, hey sir, it's a fact, you two need to get together. <laughs> this is how I got myself through chemistry. Take notes, write this down, you're gonna pass your test. So these are some general guidelines of cosmetic consistency. You think about it, water is a lot more liquidy than an emulsified cream, right? So if the water goes on first, it has a better chance to penetrate, and then the cream can later on lock it in. So if you're looking at some products of The Ordinary Online and you're trying to see where this might fit into your routine, check what they have there. They're going to tell you what kind of a solution it is, and then you can deduct where that consistency would play into your routine. Remember, lightest things first, heaviest things last. The other important thing is just to turn and learn your ingredients. The front of every single cosmetic product is all marketing buzzwords and claims and flashy little graphics to get you to buy. The truth of your cosmetics is always on the back. That is going to show you what's actually in the product. There are times this can be tricky because when you combine certain things together, they can become new molecules. For instance, a water and an oil can combine together to become an emulsion. But this is a really general rule of thumb, and if you've been on this channel for any amount of time, you know to turn and learn. And if you haven't been on this channel and you're new here, hi, subscribe and join the Butterfly family. Shameless self-promotion. <laughs> Don't even be afraid to kind of open it up and take a look. Is it more liquidy? Is it thicker like a cream? And naturally, you can kind of put those on in order. Some things that can be a little bit more tricky are things like sunscreen or products that have a little bit more silicone in them. You actually have the liberty to switch some of these around. For instance, if you have an emulsion like a retinoid that you really want to be up close and personal to the skin, you can put that on first before you do a thicker cream. Or there are other times that you might want to put your thicker cream like your sunscreen on before your moisturizer. If you're really worried about that sunscreen penetrating deep and you want to lock it in. And again, when we talk about layering, we're talking about the vehicle. So the thing that's actually going to deliver it to your skin. The active ingredients are the ones that are doing the work and those are the ones that are picky. When it comes to active ingredients, you want to make sure that you're not mixing any that you shouldn't. For example, The Ordinary highly discourages mixing their niacinamide, vitamin B3 plus zinc, along with the vitamin C in a silicone suspension. And the reason why is because that vitamin C at 30% is very potent. And when these two get together, they don't like each other. So there are specific product combinations that you should not do. And lucky for you, we've actually done a video on it. There are also other product combinations such as a vitamin C and your sunscreen that actually work well together. And when they pair, they actually boost each other's efficacy. And yes, it's your lucky day because we have already done a video explaining all of those nice combinations as well. If you learned a little something from this video, make sure that you that like button and don't forget to whoosh that subscribe button if you haven't already. The videos on mixing that I just mentioned can be found right here and we have an entire playlist of the ordinary videos to help you understand your skincare routine better. Always remember to be beautiful inside and out and I cannot wait to see you in this next video. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye.